Hey, what's up, you guys? I am back again. Are you excited? Hello, everyone. Today, we are doing another history of photography video. <laughs> guys, it looks different. We are in widescreen now. Whoa, buddy. If you like it, awesome. If you don't like it, it might not be around for long, so my gift to you. <laughs> I'm trying out something new, it looks a little different, um, and we're seeing if this looks good. I, 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 that is my argument for widescreen. Alright, so I have been making a bunch of videos about the history of photography. We have been going through chapter by chapter of my textbook, and in the past month we've covered a lot of subjects. We've talked about pinhole cameras and how to make them, we've talked about butterfly selfies, we've talked about civil war photography, we have talked about everything. We've been learning about the history of photography, where it came from, and how the process really created itself and perfected itself. And now, in chapter 6, we come upon this time when photography is still considered a photographic process and not so much an art. Art was more reserved for painting and drawing and things like that. Okay, so in the beginning of this chapter, we are in the 1850s, and that is when England's most notable photographers like Roger Fenton, Robert Howlett, and Henry Peach Robinson abandoned their amateur status and they became professionals. That's right, they loaded up their van with their new Canon Mark IIs and their new glass, and they set off to take snapshots of the world, and they were posting them on Instagram, and they were getting all these likes and all these comments, and they were professional photographers, right? Well, no. They most likely loaded up their buggies with their little box cameras, and then like moved into a studio to like take portraits of people. A little different from today. So during this time, professionals and amateurs, they really butted heads. And thus, the Royal Photographic Society of London was formed. And this was a society that was run for and by amateurs. They just celebrated photography for its own sake, not for the professionalism and the business that it was. So because of this, people began a dialogue about like the role that photography played in the world and what its future was. People like Charles Baudelaire and Lady Elizabeth Eastlake spoke of photography as a new form of communication and claimed that photography failed to address the world that it actually functioned in. Then in 1853, Sir William Newton wrote upon photography in an artistic view, and that brought up issues that regarding photography in this world. And then in 1861, the French studio of Meyer and Pearson accused Thebault Betabert, Bet... Guys, these names are really hard to say. Thebault Bet Bader and Schwable. Schwable? It's Schneeble. <laughs> it's a little, uh, School of Rock joke in there. They accused these people of unauthorized copying. When it was brought to court, however, there was a problem. Because in this time, under law, art was protected under these copyright laws. But in order for these photographs to be under these copyright laws, they first had to be considered art. That's right, it all came down to this. The court started doing their court thing. And what do you think happened? I can't hear you. In early 1862, the court ruled that it wasn't considered an art. They ruled against Meyer and Pearson, but later the court appealed and they ruled in favor of photography being an art. That's right, exciting stuff, photography is art according to French law. <laughs> and that's what we know, decides all of our futures. All right, so recently I posted this 
on Facebook and Twitter and I asked you guys what your thoughts were on photography being an art and the results were pretty uh, consistent. Yes. <laughs> Most of you said that yes, photography is an art, but a few of you said that it needs to be from an artist or it needs to have purpose. And I agree with that. I think you can't just open your iPhone camera and like hit the shutter button and expect that to be artwork. There has to be purpose, there has to be meaning behind it. But yeah, I totally agree with that. What are your thoughts on it? What makes photography art? Is photography even art? And is it art only if it's taken by an artist? And what is an artist? And what is art? And Don't think about it too long because you, you'll, you, your head will start to hurt. Alright, well that is all I have for today. We talked about photography being an art and uh, that's all I got, man. Sorry if you don't like this new widescreen style. It might go away soon, like I said, so uh, don't get used to it. <laughs> if you guys like this video, give it a big thumbs up and comment down below what your thoughts what your thoughts? What your thoughts are on photography. And uh, click right here if you want to see last week's video. If you want to start the whole playlist over, if you want to start from the beginning, you can click my face right now. And uh, click up here if you want to subscribe. Or down below. You can click down there too. I don't know what this end card is going to look like, so I'm building it right now as I'm talking. So I'm hoping that this all works out and... I don't know. Alright, well I will see you guys next week. Stay beautiful.